Thank you very much for joining us such early morning. Uh, usually in Ukraine in this moment, the, the alarm is finished and, and all, all the missile attack is finished because they, they're attacking us in, in the night. Uh, so we could speak. And I wanted to start uh, today meeting. Uh, it's right now, all Ukraine is, is uh, keeping the minute of silence for those who are killed in this, uh, in this brutal war. So I suggest for us to take the minute to, to reflect and to remember all the victims of, of this war. Thank you. I'm Hannah Dovbach, Eurasian Harm Reduction Association. I'm very, very happy to facilitate this meeting and happy for you to come. Thank you very much for the support and for all tremendous support, your countries, your citizens, uh, everybody providing to Ukraine and to Ukrainian refugees. Today we will speak about the response, response of Ministry of Health, response of a civil society community, and I have absolutely tremendous panel to present this response, which we all gave during this uh, year of, of the uh, full-scale war. So the first, uh, from the very beginning, I will give a floor to absolutely heroic Minister of Health, who developed the, the response from the first minutes of, of the, uh, of the uh, full-scale invasion of Russia in Ukraine. So I, I, I'm presenting Anna Shemet, Minister of Health of Ukraine, uh, the representative of ministry, with her presentation. Um, good morning, colleague. And uh, I want um, to start our presentation. Um, Elisa, please, next slide. Uh, before dawn of 24 February 2022, Russia launched a full-scale invasion across Ukraine using land, sea and air. By sunset, Russian special forces and airborne soldiers has, had seized uh, the nuclear site of Chernobyl after a bloody battle and we are advancing into the outskirts of the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. Ukraine is standing and is successfully fighting against as an enemy. Intense battles and uh, happening in a lot of cities and regions of our country, we however now know uh, that uh, are protecting our native land, uh, our relatives uh, and uh, the future of our children. Uh, Eliza, please, next slide. Uh, Ukraine has been uh, resisting a full-scale invasion by the Russia Federation for more than a year now. During this time, the enemy completely revealed his face and showed that he is ready to destroy absolutely everything that can fall into the crosshair of his weapons, even if these are patients of healthcare facilities and hospitals themselves. More than 22 million of people were forced to leave their homes. There were 8 million of refugees from Ukraine across Europe as of uh, uh, 27 February 2023. Elizabeth, next slide. Um, as of uh, 7th June 2022, the Ministry of Health of, the, of Ukraine reported uh, that after 24th February 2022, Russia destroyed 739 health care facilities, of which more than 118 were completely destroyed and cannot be restored. Um, next. Okay, uh, just a few problems of what trace an aggressive nature um, left behind. Occupation of certain regions and territories. Uh, Twelve regions have mostly been affected. The total front line is around 1,300 uh, kilometers. Difficulties in the logistics of drugs, medicine, and other supplies within the regions. The major of destroys healthcare facilities. Medical personnel 
draining and fleeing to other regions and countries. Medical works facing overwhelming amount of work, a shortage of drugs. Uh, Eliza, next slide and next slide, please. Uh, OST program has been implemented in Ukraine uh, since uh, um, uh, 2004, and a significant development has been achieved. Namely, uh, scientific advice based standards of treatment have been implemented uh, since uh, 2007. Uh, OST drugs have been uh, procured, uh, procured uh, with the state budget. For Funds uh, covering 100% uh, uh, of the needs of the regions. Since uh, 2020, a medical guarantee program provides uh, free OST services. Uh, since uh, uh, 2020, OST has been implemented in uh, detention facilities. More than uh, ninety-five percent of uh, HIV-positive patients receive RT, RT treatment. Progressive policies regarding uh, OST, ambitions, targets, and uh, pursuit uh, for OST implementation. Elisa, uh, effective inter uh, intersectoral cooperation on OST issues has been established. The list of service providers has been expanding. Treatment can be provided by any trained doctor, a number of training courses has been risen. Large-scale prescription of OST drugs for self-administration more than 90%. Uh, next slide. Uh, yes. Okay. The organization of OST service has always been a complex process due to a number of reasons, in particular the fact that patients have to take drugs daily and the drugs have fall under the category of strictly accountable. There are individual and complex regulations regarding their storage, dispensing and transpiration. Um. As a result of military aggression, some healthcare facilities were destroyed. Since February 24, data has been received that in the result of military action, 16 health care facilitating providing OST um, services has been damaged. The total number of patients, public health care facilities, who dropped out of the OST program in 2022 is six, um, uh, six uh, uh, thousand uh, six hundred sixty-six, with uh, uh, is which is two thousand three hundred sixty-three more patients than is two hundred twenty-one. Uh, next slide. Uh, difficulties with the logistics logistics of OST drugs due to the uncertainty of the situation regarding the temporary occupation is a territorial risk of the on the roads and uh, the need to pass checkpoints, the logistics companies that deliver it, the drugs refuse to make the planned deliveries of the drugs. In turn, the regions having used to work under normal conditions where deliveries were made according to the schedule. This not inform about the planned ex execution of the drug stocks while waiting for the delivery as uh, all this uh, created significant risk of treatment interruption. <clears throat> Since uh, uh, 2000, um, 2017, uh, seven, uh, the OST drugs uh, uh, were procured uh, with the state budget funds. <coughs> In turn, the specific uh, procurement, uh, including them, and timelines of its performance uh, was put at risk in result of a budget deficit caused by the invasion of the aggression countries. The situation was also complicated by the fact that in the first month after the invasion, the national manufacturers from whom the drugs were procured in the recent years actually terminated their 
activities uh, destroyed roads shelling suspension of public transport lead to the fact that medical works workers and patients often could uh, not get to health care facilities the specific situation significantly increased the risk of treatment interruption by patients and termination of OST services provisioned by health care facilities national drug manufacturers stopped working occupation of territories and stopping of OST programs Eliza next uh, okay uh, as a result of hostilities, some patients were forced to leave their homes and seek safe shelter in safer regions, both within the country and abroad. The war forces the majority of patients on the OST program to move within the country. Uh, termination of activities on the private health care facilities, departure of OST patients abroad, considering the fact that most of the patients of OST program uh, are men, they do not go abroad frequently. At the same time, uh, who, for uh, those persons who expressed the intention to go abroad, there was an acute problem of obtaining information about places of treatment in other countries. Uh, countries. In order to solve the situation, the specialists of uh, the public health center collected information about where they could uh, get OST services abroad. Panic, lack of uh, confidence um, that the program can continue to work, uh, miscommunication. Uh, next slide. Uh, a decrease in the number of patients under treatment was observed in some regions. Uh, next slide, please. Um, responses right now, doctors and nurses are one of our most valuable resources. Medical works are having a really critical fights for life and health of soldiers and civilians. Uh, everyday health care system services uh, countries uh, request from those who want to give a helping hand to Ukrainian clinical and hospitals. Uh, next slide. The Ministry of Health of Ukraine, the Public Center of Ukraine, the International Charitable Fund, funds uh, non-governmental organizations and uh, partners began a non-stop work to solve the problem of the field, support doctors, medical workers, and uh, what is the most important patients. Even uh, in the conditions of bombing, air raids, and uh, constant risk to their own lives, specialists continued to be faithful to the mission and stood on guard of strength and, and protect the health of the population of Ukraine. Next slide. Action uh, were taken, organization measures uh, were implement, implemented, relevant information was collected about the availability of drugs in healthcare facilities, about the movement of patients and medical personnel, as well as their needs. The healthcare system also found solutions to logistical problems, the registration of displaced persons inside the country and abroad, in order to provide support support not only to doctors, but to patients as well. The health care system promptly established cooperation with the international organizations, state institutions, donors, patients, organizations, volunteers, and clinics from all around the world. Uh, next. Um, in order to resolve uh, the situation, the center implemented the following response measures. <coughs> Manual monitoring of the cons uh, consumption of the of OST drugs, taking into account the mentioned risk from the first day after the invasion, the monitoring of the availability of the OST drugs was uh, switched to manual mode. Employees of the PHC collected uh, weekly information of uh, on the availability of OST drugs from the um, healthcare facilities due to the promptly implemented new mechanism, it was possible to prevent the treatment interruption in a number of regions. 
uh, after the invasion and the mentioned uh, both supplies were suspended for a certain time time and a separate orders was issued to renew them regulating the delivery of drugs to the final recipients uh, thus uh, it was decided that the delivery would be made not only to a de designated uh, healthcare facilitated on a pharmacy or a pharmacy warehouse at the level of the region as well usually the care but also to specific uh, healthcare facilitators uh, that had difficulties in picking up the drugs in the regions by themselves. It was possible to distribute drugs to, to all recipients on time and to prevent treatment interruption. A mechanism for the delivery of OST drugs was developed and applied using the versions of the IC aliens for public health. During this time, the aliens was able uh, to deliver to a number of regions the drugs uh, procured uh, with the funds of the state budget as well as, uh, as those uh, procured with the funds of the GFIM. Uh, taking into account the risk of uh, temporary occupation of certain regions, the risk of disruption, disruption of transport connection, the refusal of logistic companies to deliver drugs, one of the mechanisms for providing treatment interruption was the arrangement of buffer stocks of drugs in the regions uh, in order to enable this activity, the order of the Ministry of Health of Ukraine on the storage of narcotics drugs, psychotropic substances and precursors under the martial law condition was issued, allowing the storage of the three months supply of drugs in healthcare facilities during the martial law. Previously, only the month supply was allowed to be stored in the healthcare facilities. In order to provide for buffer stocks of drugs, uh, the ICF Public Health Alliance and the charity organization 100% life uh, procured uh, drug residents uh, from the national manufacturer a ALC Intercham. Uh, thanks uh, to all the measures taken, it was possible to deliver drugs to all regions in need. Uh, next slide. Uh, in order to enable the procurement of the drugs, the PHC provided uh, for uh, prompt uh, procurement of drug uh, residues from the national manufacturers, uh, negotiation with the international agencies, and uh, agreed uh, procurement of OST drugs with the funds uh, of international projects. The city of manufacturers ready to supply the drug for Ukraine. Uh, next, uh, uh, drugs uh, we can uh, dis dispensing of OST drugs to patients for self administration for. Uh, 13 days. Uh, drugs uh, and uh, handed uh, over for a period of uh, up to 13 days in case of risk of treatment interruption in regions with uh, active hostilities. Before the introduction of the martial law, it was allowed uh, to hand over OST drugs for self administration for a period of up days. Um, the center took the following uh, measure um, sent to the new uh, flexible mechanism regions to health care facilitators can apply for the amount of drugs they need taking into account uh, to needs uh, of the internally displayed persons rather uh, then uh, begin being uh, limited uh, by the existing schedules. Uh, the following has been uh, improved information in uh, exchange between doctors, verification of data and uh, pre prevision treatment of the patients in the center database of the e health, checking data on provision treatment in the Cyrex database, thanks to develop an identification mechanism, it was possible to prevent cases of drug abuse uh, then patients tried to get drugs in several several places at the same time or cases where without being able to identify the patients as the one who received treatment doctors start treatment whom the induction stage. Uh, information about OST sites uh, is different countries was collected and the support was provided to patients traveling about in terms of um, 
ensuring treatment continue, uh, paying among uh, patients of health professional in uh, consistently of afford the following was carried out weekly meetings for patients and doctors from the first weeks of the war to inform them uh, of the current situation, weekly monthly status report of on the current situation which uh, the OST program, weekly meeting of stakeholders on OST issues, uh, as the operative decisions and activities, a pilot project has been launched regarding video surveillance of the intake of OST drugs doses, ensuring ac uh, access to new OST drugs, which had not been used in Ukraine before buprenorphine and the combined uh, form of buprenorphine plus naloxone suboxone. A study has been launched to examine the effect of self-administration of OST drugs on um, adherence to treat and uh, retention in, in regulation, training of, drug, of uh, doctors, development of online courses uh, to increase uh, the level of knowledge, uh, knowledge of doctors about OST. A number of studies were conducted, assessment of a change in the drug scene, uh, assessment to the, of the level of knowledge of providers of OST services, a prevalence of uh, adverse uh, reaction of, uh, to OST drugs, implementation of the medical information system, the re register of OST patients has been started. Implementation of pilot project on the treatment of um, HCV on the basic of OST sites. In addition, uh, to ensure the transparency uh, of decision-making, weekly meeting of the problem K stakeholders are held separately with the pacification of um, World Health Organization, CDC, you know, this is the global funds, um, ICF Alliance for Public Health, charity organization, one person, 100% person life, USAID, at such meeting, the current stage of provision of OST service and the fun functioning to the program, it's also discussed the transparency of decision-making, communication, partnership, and the key principles we currently follow when creating platform for decision-making. Uh, as of uh, one point, uh, one point uh, to, uh, to 2023, the number of people with mental and behavioral disaster due to the use of, of opioids who were being treated of uh, healthcare facilities uh, was. Um, uh, 20, um, uh, 28,523, uh, of which uh, uh, 9,990 uh, people receive service in public healthcare facilities, uh, 8,604 people in private healthcare facilities. Uh, in um, percentage terms, in the increase in patients for um, uh, 2022 uh, in public health care facilities uh, was uh, uh, 2,876 uh, um, patients in private, 5,082 patients. Um, as 1.23, uh, um, uh, the total number of uh, people who received OST drugs for self-administration outside the public health care facilities uh, was um, uh, 19 percent. The number of patients who receive drugs for self-administration through the pharmacies uh, decreases uh, from uh, 163 people uh, at the beginning of the period uh, to uh, 114. Um, it is difficult to describe all the pain experienced by the citizens of Ukraine. We had uh, the opportunity to talk with the doctors providing coexistence services, ordinary people who is the face of a mortal treat under daily air raids to enemy aircraft under artillery um, and uh, missile attacks, did not leave the city and uh, continue to the resistance. Thank you for your attention.
you very much, uh, Anna. And uh, I need to say that that's absolutely unprecedented uh, work, which uh, Ministry of Health and Central Public Health and all our doctor, nurses, civil society organization together did. And I need I, I need to say that from the very first minutes of the war, this commitment to support people who use drugs and their essential treatment, OST treatment, and you've heard about research innovations in this time. So not only to, to fulfill the commitment at, to harm reduction, to support civil society, to support the, uh, uh, services, but also to innovate, to change the system, to make it more efficient. Absolutely unprecedented response. And thank you for this example. Uh, and actually, that was very good cooperation between communities who help support each other, support their peers, civil society who develop the flexible system of delivering drugs and delivering services, uh, evacuating, widening the, the, the range of services. And actually, I, I need to, to give the floor to representative of people using drugs in the uh, Ukrainian country coordination mechanism, representing uh, all Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian network of people who use drugs, Volna, and in the same time, EDG, AIDS uh, Treatment Group, uh, Anton Basenko. Good afternoon. So my name is Anton Basenko, and it's a great pleasure for me to speak after representative of Ministry of Health with such a detailed um, a, um, presentation of um, issues of opioid substitution therapy because I'm one of the first opioid substitution therapy patients in Ukraine since 2004. So for me, it's really uh, some kind of a personal um, uh, honor, let's say. And of course, um, thanks Anna for saving my time because she uh, really presented well uh, the majority of issues we as the community of people who use drugs at least those who are opioid substitution therapy patients, the problems which we faced with um, um, due to this um, war um, issue. So I will speak, as Anna mentioned, on behalf of two organizations. Um, um, I, I will start from uh, Ukrainian Network of People Who Use Drugs. Next slide, please. Um, so it's a network of uh, 1,500 uh, individual members and 28 organizations. Uh, we are doing work on the national level and uh, uh, we have our um, a voting seat in, in the Cabinet of Ministers um, National Council on HIV, AIDS and Tuberculosis, uh, which is also CCM, Country Coordination Mechanism for the Global Fund in, in the country. Uh, we have uh, 24 repre representative offices in, uh, on the regional level supporting initiative groups. We are doing certain advocacy, capacity building. We, of course, advocating and uh, helping to open uh, new service points, new uh, uh, opioid substitution therapy sites. Um, we are doing um, advocacy around um, uh, uh, legal changes to, to have really progressive in, in, instead of um, uh, a regressive or repressive um, drug policy. Next slide, please. Um, and as you can see, we are uh, united and it's a good entry point to the largest key population in Ukraine. So estimate number of people who inject drugs. It's only who inject drugs. Estimate number 350,000 people in Ukraine. So nobody really tried uh, uh, to, to calculate properly the, the number of people who use drugs. I think it's definitely a lot less than a million people. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, of course, for us, <clears throat> our life experience, and it, it's, it's the most motivation. And of course, the peer-to-peer -peer support, especially when we are, let's say, <clears throat> accustomed to live in the war mode, let's say, I mean, the war on drugs mode, but when the real war comes into your country and you kind of morally prepared, you just, of course, you, you just mobilize yourself more and more and you try to find some resources to, to you know, uh, um, maybe build some uh, new uh, networks of, of help. And uh, that's why I want to, to show you how, how this help could look like in such a critical times. Uh, next slide, please. So we were actually one of the first um, communities who organized and started this um, support uh, of people who use drugs. Next slide. Um, of course, um, so besides all those um, issues which, uh, <clears throat> which uh, was presented by uh, Anna from Ministry of Health, of course, uh, uh, people who use drugs as the citizens of Ukraine, they're faced with the same the same uh, uh, problems as, as the common people. I mean, the, 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 the houses were destroyed. They were, uh, they were in the need of uh, um, um, moving to other regions or being evacuated. Uh, 
Um, and that's where uh, we as a network, uh, of course, helped. Uh, of course, we, 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 we uh, had certain resources from different organizations, uh, but more than 2000s of uh, uh, people who use drugs and their families, it's not just people who use drugs, but their families and relatives, they were evacuated with the help of our network. Next slide, please. Uh, we understand that when your house is destroyed after bombing or shelling and you just, uh, or you are moving to another region, of course, the first, the basic need is where, where you live, where, where would you live? So, and of course, the need of provision cer certain temporary residence, whether it's a certain shelter or um, kind of rented apartment. Uh, so more than 400 people uh, received this support from our network as well. Next slide, please. Of course, another basic need is the food. And of course, uh, we uh, provided, we helped with the uh, provision of food sets and more than almost 7,000 of people who use drugs received uh, food assistance from our network. Thanks. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we also realize that it's not just about you know food and uh, and uh, and housing, but uh, also certain material aid and some small funds, you know, for some other needs. Uh, people really uh, need it as well, and almost two thousands of people received certain material aid um, as well. Um, next slide, please. Uh, but uh, what we also, of course, uh, we are also involved in the, we assisted in the delivery of uh, antiretroviral therapy and OST drugs because, as Anna said, when uh, logistics uh, chains were interrupted, um, and of course we were trying to find alternative, you know, solutions to, to, to avoid interruptions of life-saving treatment for people in the regions, um, we, 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 we have some opportunity with, with transport and of course, it's our personal commitment as well, because it's not only people who use drugs, I'm also personally living with HIV. And for me, and for meaningful part of, of people who use drugs, let's say in Ukraine, uh, of course, it's, it's a matter of uh, daily receiving of two medications. It's not just opioid substitution therapy. It's also ARV uh, interruption of which is, is really risky for your um, uh, life. Um, next slide, please. And of course, we uh, support and assist in organizing harm reduction programs and access to overdose prevention. Um, and here you can see the delivery of uh, harm reduction supplies to one of the uh, regions of Ukraine. Next slide. Um, of course, we should always say thanks to our, our organizations who supported us, and it, 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 it could be uh, possible without um, funding and other uh, resources support from the organizations you can see on this um, slide, as well as we are always uh, thankful for all who, you know, um, who politically supports um, our community and helps us to um, to resolve the our issues. Next slide, please. Yeah, I will be really fast. So, but uh, the, the first part was about the people uh, in Ukraine, so mostly internally displaced people. But as a representative of European AIDS Treatment Group, it's a, uh, all this network of people living with or affected by HIV, and we are based in Brussels, in Belgium. Uh, we celebrated 30 years. Um, so, of course, once first uh, people started to, to fleeing from Ukraine and uh, people whose drugs or other communities representatives appeared in e EU countries, of course, it was our also organizational commitment. Next slide, please. To start helping uh, them on this side as, as, as refugees or uh, as migrants. And uh, you can see on these slides what, what work we are doing. So we had a, uh, uh, we organized a separate focal point uh, to coordinate with the different st stakeholders and uh, our members and organizations uh, on the local level in the EU member states. We contributed to Help Now UA initiative, which my other colleague will, will tell uh, more about. Uh, direct financial support of partner organizations. Uh, of course, we were working with media to raise awareness about what's happening in Ukraine. And of course, we were collecting uh, donations. Next slide. Uh, some policy and advocacy, you can also see um, the special uh, civil society forum on HIV, viral hepatitis and tuberculosis, uh, but as a coordination platform for Ukraine. And uh, of course, we were other events we use for <coughs> raising the needs of Ukrainian key populations in this emergency context. And we've been involved in, you know, uh, development of certain, you know, um, uh, technical documents uh, for Ukrainian refugees and uh, uh, different publications. So that's uh, next slide. I think that's it from my side. Uh, thanks a lot for letting me speak Thank here. Thank you, Anton. Thank you, Slava Ukraine.
uh, and actually that that's what that was important that how how all the countries supported and and we all were united and that that's very important to understand the needs and to respond immediately and now i will give a floor to sergey uh, filipovich from alliance for public health ukraine and i hope that sergey Andrich, you will be fast uh, will presenting uh, one of the one one of uh, several biggest organizations working in uh, Ukraine, uh, how civil society responded. Sergey Andrich. So we're describing a period which started on February 24, 2022. So already, uh, already colleagues uh, mentioned that it's created uh, a big challenges to all Ukraine, the whole citizens, as or health care system, also many buildings were destroyed, the territory occupied, and uh, people uh, need to play or uh, uh, inside the country or outside the country. So uh, it's about two weeks uh, after war started, and you see already uh, near two millions uh, of refugees in neighboring country, and then it's up to uh, eight thousand uh, refugees and uh, uh, additional uh, seven, seven uh, million sorry uh, internally displaced people, and many uh, healthcare facilities uh, were destroyed or damaged. So all uh, these factors uh, create uh, many challenges uh, for harm reduction program, for substitution therapy, which colleagues from public health center already described, and uh, how we manage these uh, issues. It's also uh, many of innovation like transportation, logistic of uh, drugs uh, using uh, <coughs> alliance uh, vans mobile ambulance vans and uh, other but uh, starting from first uh, of March 2022 we developed or started developed this uh, service because we start help now I mean we start from uh, chatbot and then uh, the aid uh, developed uh, services which include chatbot and online case management, online medical consultation. Also, uh, we create hubs in Poland and Germany where the biggest number of refugees uh, were <coughs> allocated. Uh, web resources, and I don't mention, I want to mention uh, uh, many international partners and national also, which uh, without uh, their help, it uh, will be difficult to organize services in such short time. We put together all information uh, in neighboring country where it's possible to get uh, IRT, OST, other services. Uh, but I want to mention again that uh, in the beginning, first uh, two weeks, uh, we mainly, or oh, 50% oriented on uh, request in Ukraine, because people uh, in Kiev and us in Kharkiv also ask uh, what shall they do, what, uh, where they can uh, obtain services and drugs, which site uh, functioning, which site uh, not functioning. So uh, and we provide also this information and uh, contact our colleagues and public health center also uh, to provide uh, information, navigate patient and uh, organize uh, the possibility for them to receive uh, necessary treatment and services. So uh, we uh, describe challenges uh, which, uh, particularly in OST area, uh, our people face in countries, German, uh, uh, others, um, I don't want to describe the uh, in detail, but uh, it's different system and uh, we use our uh, 
colleagues, our partners' organization in these countries, also colleagues who uh, have been in these countries uh, to help uh, help our clients uh, to, to get this treatment. Uh, because uh, only information on site uh, uh, was not enough. So, and sometimes uh, they need social support, they sometimes or frequently even they, need, they uh, ask for translation. So, and we uh, also <coughs> support them uh, with this. Uh, in service delivery for us in Ukraine, also uh, many uh, things happened. Uh, <coughs> particularly uh, new priorities uh, for patients uh, appears like humanitarian needs, food, food shelters, uh, and we also, like uh, our partner organization, work on this. So, land supported uh, such as three shelters uh, during uh, one year in January, uh, just opened a new one in hostel format, and we plan to open. So, I want to mention international support and international communication. Uh, we uh, share the experience of civil society in Ukraine. We uh, describe how uh, civil society react and uh, faced uh, this uh, crisis. And also we have received support from uh, Regional Drug Policy Commission. Uh, this uh, commission uh, due media briefing also bring attention to the war in Ukraine and the challenges health system faced in this time. So about OST, we actually heard from each presentation, but again, it was in March 2022 decrease of number of patients due to occupied territory due to some a patient migrated or <coughs> go to other sites, but uh, after all, uh, we even managed to increase uh, during the year number of patients. So it's uh, public health sectors, and also we need to add uh, those who receive treatment from private. So um, actually, figures already presented. Have been presented. In conclusion, uh, so it's clear that the community-based uh, service has proven the effect effectiveness to sustain each response during the war, managed to provide immediate response to urgent needs and challenges, uh, provide quick and life-saving services. Uh, also, civil society organization organized evacuation from the war zones. Uh, first need services provided. Uh, and it is an important lesson that the story with the discontinuation of the life saving services, like it was in Crimea and occupied Donbass areas in Ukraine in 2014, repeat again the newly occupied territories saw an immediate termination of all um, reduction services and life saving treatment for people who live with HIV and for people with drug debt. Dependency. So uh, history represents. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey, and thank you to your team of for for this resilient and for for this support. Actually, what uh, war is is showing that the true network and true support and true community in the pure meaning and that what we saw in our um, Eurasian network uh, Eurasian Association of harm reduction we saw how in the first days all around the uh, Eastern Europe Central Asia all our community organizations stand up with Ukraine to support Ukraine and that was 24 7 support never paid by the, by the local countries or municipalities never expected like this and we are grateful to 
Polish colleague, Moldova, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia, everybody were mobilized. And from our partners, Poland became the first stop and, and first location for, for millions of Ukrainian. And I will give the floor to uh, Magdalena Barknik for, from Precursor Foundation for social policy from Poland to share the story of this support and, and solidarity. Please, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so after the invasion started in February and March, there were 2.4 million entries to Poland. And what we saw was the mass solidarity movement of families, neighbors, local communities and non-governmental organization and enormous grassroots spontaneous mobilization. Next slide. Not, sorry, next slide. Oh, sorry, I have to, yeah. Uh, not counting on state uh, and not waiting for the response. Private and inst uh, institutional activists, activities overlapped. Town mayors and community members were transporting those fleeing the war, helping them materially and hosting them in the cities. Everyone helped. State involvement was then criticized at that point for being too late, insufficient, uh, interfering with much more effective spontaneous action. Next slide, please. Uh, March 12, uh, the Act on Assistance to Citizens of Ukraine was signed, uh, giving access to social benefits, public health care, education and labor market. According to European Union Agency for Funda Fundamental Rights survey from uh, published this year, uh, among very important data, uh, we need to underline that health conditions of refugees residing in Poland um, are alarming. 20% assess it as bad. 44% as average. The most common barriers to getting med medical care is lack of knowledge of language and not understanding the functioning of medical system. As of yes. March, yes, as of March 6, there were more than 1.5 million, uh, million people registered for temporary protection in Poland. 85% uh, women and children and 15% men. Next, please. Uh, according to the MCDDA transporter breathing, uh, an estimated number of people who inject opioids from Ukraine in Poland is between 2,000 and 8,500. And uh, OAT patients, 120 uh, to 500. Before war, uh, there were the estimated number of uh, Polish citizens using opioids in injection was between 15 and 70,000, and there were 3,000 OAT patients, and that is since 1992. Uh, there were around 2,500 clients of harm reduction services. The current situation of Ukrainian people who inject drugs, 120, around 120 OAT patients, 380 contacts, but that includes also HIV testing. So harm reduction services and opioid agonist treatment programs help around 100 people, uh, sorry, like uh, without the patients, so around 100 people with harm reduction services. Next, please. When you, when you look at the uh, pre-existing pre conditions, the uh, harm reduction and OST coverage is really low. You see the map, the blue points are opioid agonist treatment programs. Uh, substitute uh, substitute uh, medication uh, is not prescribed by doctor. And these three red cities, um, there are harm reduction programs being run there. A uh, couple of few needle and surgery uh, exchange programs in other parts of, of Poland. OAT and HIV clinics are in urban settings. Um, OST is a high, uh, high threshold um, programs with, uh, with sobriety regime, uh, low access to HIV and hepatitis C, really low access to social help, no access to, self, self, uh, to safe housing and shelters for people who use drugs. 
and lack of gender sensitive programs. Next, please. So uh, in the, our project uh, founded by AIDS Fonds and Mercy Corps, supporting people who use drugs um, coming from Ukraine, we are working through outreach, online and in-person in, assistance in accessing and maintaining treatments, emotional support and material aid. Since 2017, we've been running harm reduction mobile unit with the uh, Foundation for Social Education, uh, providing HIV, hepatitis C and STI testing and needle syringe program. And there were also many Ukraine uh, clients uh, reaching that service. Next slide, please. What are the barriers in accessing treatment? Language and communication. Providing information is not enough. People need to be assisted at every stage of the treatment entry process. There are different working hours of OSD programs and HIV clinics. Doctors who admit to treatment work, for example, for two, two hours in a week. So it's not just an information of address and contact, but the people, we were needed really to arrange and schedule the meetings and find out all requirements needed, like medical records, sometimes translated medical records and so on. Um, logistics, it's when you're a woman uh, being hosted in the eastern part of Poland because people were taking refugees all around the country and the nearest OAT program is 200 kilometers away and our HIV clinic, it is really difficult to reach these facilities. If you have a child, it's even more challenging. And when you realize the situation of people being hosted, small villages and towns, far away from urban settings and lack of um, ability to really communicate, whereas harm reduction services uh, can uh, navigate system really well, this is really important to, to underline the assistance and being with someone at every stage. There are also, uh, of course, unmet needs childcare and social help. We also uh, helped, uh, we also provided material aid. Of course, stigma and fear. So we try to ensure the sense of security and offering emotional support. Once again, harm reduction um, was the place of, uh, of safe ground and safe environment. There were people saying that we were the only ones they could display their drug use and health status and not talking about this with their host families or any other organization. And this is crucial when we think of reaching to people and really getting, the, um, getting in touch with them and access and, and uh, helping them to get to treatment. The barriers and challenges in providing access to treatment, administrative issues, it's a question of legal requirements in accessible treatment, but also a question of ability of addiction facilities to ease treatment restrictions, giving patients bigger doses uh, one time, for example, in, for two weeks and not to have patients to come to program every day. National program capacity is also an issue, uh, as we know that there are already uh, waiting lists for patients to want to enter the treatment. Lack of psychosocial support, safe housing, social assistance and employment within the programs and lack of female sensitive approach. We, we also have to take into account people on move and the continuity of care. Barriers in accessing harm reduction services, not knowing about services, not a new environment, different needs, and of course stigma, but the challenges connected with harsh drug law and a lack, like lack of uh, life-saving medications. We do not have naloxone available in Poland and people do ask for, uh, ask for it. Methadone is in liquid form and, and it's really, um, I mean, it, uh, it impacts uh, people and uh, increases risk. Uh, when it's injected, and people on the move and be in contact with them um, is, was, also, was also a challenge. So building relationship with the community based on peer work and trying to meet the needs, that was our main focus. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you very much uh, for this actually heroic and what I need to say, uh, this uh, war and this, this disaster bring us to the real true meaning of harm reduction, which is solidarity, providing help, support, employment, food, uh, uh, place to shelter to 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 to, uh, to stay mental health and unfortunately this would be the systematic problem and we, we are facing it as a systematic problem which catalyzes problems in harm reduction in European countries in hosting countries in Central Asia but I believe that in solidarity we really succeed to to do the better systems for Europeans, for Ukrainians, and all together we, we, we will win. Thank you very much. Slava Ukraina.